am a woman. My person is my own. I must decide alone when my body I will share with children I may bear. Over 75 million women cope with unintended pregnancies each year. 46 million opt for abortion. Each one of these women is entitled to safe abortion care. The global community, governments around the world have all committed themselves to the human rights of women, their sexual and reproductive rights, their right to choose when and if they want to have a child. Access to safe abortion services can enable women to exercise these rights. Unfortunately, across the globe, including in India, unsafe abortions far outnumber safe abortions. Access to safe abortion care that women are entitled to can be provided by health professionals like us. Frankly, we have no other choice. The facts staring in our face are stark. Every year, 20 million women undergo unsafe abortions, 4 million in India. 67,000 women die of unsafe abortions, 12,000 in India. About 9 out of 100 maternal deaths in India are due to unsafe abortion. Every day, so many women like Ragini, who face the reality of an unintended pregnancy, look for desperate solutions. The idea of abortion has always been shrouded with stigma. In India, the situation is further complicated because people think abortion is illegal. This drives many women to seek out unqualified, untrained abortion practitioners who offer backroom secrecy. Until a few years ago, the only available option was surgical. Present-day research has given us new technologies that can greatly reduce abortion-related risks. Manual vacuum aspiration and electric vacuum aspiration have already proved to be safer alternatives to DNC. The novel non-surgical option now available is medical abortion. Most women who approach us are unaware of newer, safer abortion options. We need more information about the latest technologies, like medical abortion, which is expanding choices for women and clinicians. Medical abortion is a non-surgical intervention to terminate early pregnancies, and the combination of mifepristone and mesoprostol is the most widely accepted regimen to date. In India, this combination has been approved for termination of pregnancies of up to 49 days, though the global evidence shows it can be used up to 63 days from the last menstrual period. Medical abortions can be used safely even in the most basic settings, as long as backup care of complications or failures is accessible. The first drug Mifepristone, commonly known as RU486, is a synthetic antiprogestin, which was discovered and developed in France by Dr. Etienne Emile Bolio way back in 1980. Today, RU486 or Mifepristone is approved in about 30 countries, including most parts of Europe, China, USA, and now India. Mifepristone, a derivative of norethindrone, binds to the progesterone receptor and acts as an antiprogestin. As we know, progesterone establishes and maintains the decidual attachment. Mifepristone blocks the action of progesterone and alters the endometrium to cause separation of the trophoblast from the decidua. It also causes cervical ripening and induces rhythmic uterine contractions. Mesoprostol 
The second drug used for medical abortion is a synthetic prostaglandin E1 analog used for the treatment of gastric ulcers. It stimulates uterine contractions and helps expel the already detached conceptus. The combined action of mifepristone and mesoprostol is successful in achieving a complete abortion in 92-97% to of cases depending upon the gestational age at use. In February 2002, Mifepristone was approved by the Drugs Controller of India for medical termination of pregnancy through 49 days. The drugs are now available under different brand names and can be prescribed by and used only under the supervision of a certified abortion provider. Results of studies in developing countries indicate that medical abortion is effective, desirable and acceptable to women and clinicians. Our studies showed our success rates of 95% were as high as in Europe and the Americas. More than 97% of women with successful medical abortions were satisfied with the method. In fact, 95% of them said they would choose the method again if they found themselves inadvertently pregnant and would recommend it to others. With adequate training and referral facilities, medical abortion along with MVA has a tremendous potential to increase access to safe abortion care and reduce abortion-related mortality and morbidity in rural and remote areas. We also found that in our rural studies where anemia is relatively common, medical abortion is safe. Based on our studies, I believe Medical abortion can be offered safely and effectively in urban and rural areas in India. A national expert group meeting was held at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences in October 2002. The aim was to review the scientific information and formulate guidelines for the safe uses of mifepristone and misoprostol which is a highly effective combination for termination of early pregnancy. The MTP Act of 1971 was largely an empowering act for both women and healthcare providers. It was recently amended in cognizance of the advent of medical methods. As a result, certified practitioners can now provide medical abortion in their clinic, provided they have access to an approved site for backup and treatment of complications. For the purpose of access, the registered medical practitioner should display a certificate to the effect. Of course, it is mandatory that all requirements of the MTP Act be fulfilled. Medical abortion is an easy practice to set up. Except for some basic requirements, I did not need to invest in any big infrastructure. Also you know how most women fear hospitals and surgery. I found they were really happy to know that I have this new service. Actually they like the idea of privacy with no hospitalization, no surgery and no anesthesia. We know how important it is to counsel women when they opt for abortion. It is even more important in the case of medical abortion. Such counseling helps them to better manage the process of medical abortion. Various studies in India and abroad have shown that the quality of counselling is directly linked to how women respond to medical abortion. To be a candidate for medical abortion, the woman must accept and fulfil certain basic criteria and obligations. Be willing to accept the projected time frame, return for approximately three recommended visits, and accept the possibility of an occasionally indicated surgical procedure. She must have easy physical or telephone access to backup or emergency facilities. A prerequisite to undertake medical abortion would be a clinical evaluation with hemoglobin estimation, blood group and Rh type being the minimum basic investigations. Apart from explaining the process of medical abortion, it is very important to rule out contraindications like ectopic pregnancy, IUD in place, hemorrhagic disorders, 
severe anemia, chronic adrenal failure, uncontrolled hypertension, uncontrolled seizure disorder and unwillingness to undergo surgical intervention if required. A previous cesarean section is not a contraindication. It should be noted that since misoprostol is a weak bronchodilator, bronchial asthma is not a contraindication. Since misoprostol may be excreted in the breast milk, breastfeeding women should be advised to avoid breastfeeding on the day of misoprostol. Women need counselling about the possible side effects they may experience. Bleeding, pain, gastrointestinal symptoms like nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, fever. Though blood loss is an inherent part of medical abortion, it is similar to the blood loss which occurs in surgical abortion. In surgical abortion, the woman is not privy to the bleeding, whereas in medical abortion, she actually sees the bleeding. It is therefore important to reassure her that the bleeding in medical abortion will not have any effect on her health. I have found that women also need to be properly counselled about the kind and duration of pain they will experience. Women should also be counselled regarding possible complications that may arise, like incomplete or missed abortion, a continuing pregnancy, or excessive bleeding requiring surgical intervention and occasionally blood transfusion. In case of an incomplete or missed abortion or a continuing pregnancy, it is crucial that she is willing to have the abortion completed surgically. Let us review medical abortion as a safe abortion alternative. An early diagnosis and confirmation of a pregnancy is essential. This may be done by clinical examination, pregnancy testing or ultrasound, though ultrasound diagnosis is not mandatory. After having confirmed that Ragini is no more than seven weeks pregnant, the doctor counsels her about various possibilities so that she may now make an informed choice. She has two options. Surgical abortion with a very high efficacy is quick and does not require multiple visits. But it is invasive, requiring hospitalization and sometimes requiring anesthesia. Medical abortion based on a regimen of pills is a process that entails multiple visits spread over two or three weeks with an efficacy range between 92 and 97%. However, it is non-invasive, requires no hospitalization and is potentially more private and allows women to continue with their daily routine. Many women vouch for medical abortion for precisely these reasons. I have been in the hospital and I have been in the hospital. I have been in the hospital and I have been in the hospital. I have been in the hospital. I had no problem, just some bleeding and pain that the doctors had already informed me before. They had given me some medicines, then it was okay. I could go on to my routine, no problem. Medical abortion is basically a private process which simulates a spontaneous abortion. Ragini is surprised. She cannot believe there is nothing more to it. She understands there would be pain and bleeding, but most women find that bearable. She accepts there might be occasional side effects that can be treated with medication. Ragini starts wondering about the bleeding. A majority of women have bleeding or spotting for two weeks, though in some cases, spotting may continue for several more weeks. Bleeding is heaviest on the day of misoprostol. However, the bleeding in medical abortion is well tolerated. There is some doubt in Ragini's mind. Would the abortion be assured? She learns that about 5 out of 100 women have a missed or incomplete abortion or ongoing pregnancy. Because of the risk of fetal malformation due to mesoprostol exposure, it is imperative that the rare case of a continuing pregnancy must be terminated surgically. Ragini obviously does not want a pregnancy at this point. The doctor offers her a bouquet of contraceptive choices, 
Since there is generally an early return to fertility, the chosen contraceptive should be used soon after medical abortion is administered. I find that for a successful medical abortion, a woman should be able to follow instructions and understand the importance of visits and follow-up. She should be willing to have a surgical intervention in case of a missed or incomplete abortion or continuing pregnancy. In case of medical abortion, one thing I ensure is that she can contact me any time for a possible emergency. Read it carefully. Ragini seems all set to opt for medical abortion. As per the MTP Act, Ragini's own signature on the consent form is enough to proceed. This then becomes day one. She can be given the first dose right away. One oral tablet of 200 milligrams of Mifepristone on day one. While the traditional recommendation has been for a 600 milligram dose, evidence-based research testifies to the effectiveness of a 200 milligram dose. Most women report no discomfort after Mifepristone administration, while some may experience spotting and nausea. In around 5% of cases, complete abortion occurs after Mifepristone alone. Even then, it is advisable to complete the entire protocol with misoprostol and the follow-up. As she leaves, Ragini is instructed to return 48 hours later on day 3. On day 3, the day for the second visit, she is administered 400 micrograms of misoprostol orally or vaginally. Suitable analgesics including NSAIDs can be prescribed to cope with the expected pain. Once again, Ragini is reminded about what to expect, pain and bleeding comparable to heavy menstruation or spontaneous miscarriage. Maybe nausea, vomiting, dizziness, diarrhea, fever. The doctor can choose to make Ragini wait at the clinic for four hours, by which time the abortion is expected to occur in 60% of cases. It is less than four hours since she took misoprostol. She is experiencing bleeding and knows the abortion process is underway. Though Ragini's abortion has followed a definite, predictable pattern, if the bleeding is severe, say two pads per hour for more than two consecutive hours, she must immediately call or seek emergency service and advice. For 40% of women, abortion occurs after the four hours away from the clinic. In that case, they should be reminded to look out for the passage of clots and tissue. Ragini knows all this. Certainly, it would have been very traumatic if she had not been prepared about what she would experience during the process. On day 15, Ragini is at the clinic for the third visit. The doctor conducts a pelvic examination. No ultrasound is necessary to confirm the completed process. All seems fine. Before Ragini leaves, she has been counselled once more about contraception. She knows, though medical abortion has been a smooth, tolerable process for her, it is better to have contraception rather than another unintended pregnancy. Medical abortion is a really private, non-invasive, safe, effective option. It is an option that you as a provider and women as users can be satisfied with. Around the world, over 15 million women have already opted for medical abortion. With a 95% rate of efficacy, approved in about 30 countries, a proven track record of safety, the Mephipriston misoprostol regimen approved for use in India is certainly an option you can provide right away. <laughs>